Now, in my clue and commentary, I've done my best to avoid old videos, because I know from experience that as time goes by, people's videos can become outdated when it comes to the creator's current opinion on a topic or a video. But this video really intrigued me, because it's not only discussing a topic I've talked about previously, but it also presents new arguments that I have not addressed before. So while the topic is familiar, it isn't redundant and repetitive. Yes, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, we are talking about blackwashing. Again, how fun. On top of that, this video is covering a pretty well-respected art commentator. Today we're talking about Thuman, and we'll be talking about a video she made three years ago called Anime Characters Are Not Asian? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, because holy shit, it's really bad. I actually tagged Thuman on Twitter, asking if she still agreed with the video I wanted to cover, and it's been four days at the time of scripting, and I haven't gotten a response, and I'm impatient, so I'm gonna cover it anyway. Before we get into it, I do want to let you all know that I have made an in-depth video on the topic of blackwashing before, and I'd recommend watching that video if you want to know my full opinion on blackwashing as well as whitewashing. Link in the description, but without further ado, let's just get straight into it, because this is going to be a mess. Hi guys, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be discussing the aftermath of my whitewash versus blackwash video that recently hit 200,000 views. I knew it was a controversial topic when I made the video, but I still didn't realize how much of a heated debate it started in the comments. Today I will be responding to some of the points made in the comments and clarify things that I wish I had included in my original video. For reference, it's better if you watch the original video first and come back here after doing that. Her original video is pretty basic and doesn't really have many points that I haven't already covered in other videos. Maybe someday I'll make like a one or two shot on it, but there really isn't much to say about that video that I haven't already said in others. What I will say though, Despite the massive issues in that video, she was actually relatively reasonable and explained her points in a way that wasn't accusatory or calling anyone racist, which I feel is the right way to go about this topic. So, uh, credit to her, I guess? It's funny how people who've cited this video to others have been... not as kind, to say the least. This video, though, is much worse than her last one like like much worse i left the link in the description of this video and in the i card above without any further ado let's start anime characters are japanese and you are erasing asian representation by blackwashing i heard this so many times in the comments that i even had to make a disclaimer on my pinned comment in that video shortly put i disagree with this statement in my opinion most anime characters are ambiguous when it comes to their race or ethnicity if we look at any of these characters, for example, Naruto, Edward from Full Metal Alchemist, Asta from Black Clover, or Usagi from Sailor Moon, and so on, we can realize a similarity in all of them. They all have blonde hair with blue or green eyes, and they all end up looking more European than Asian or Japanese. I have five ways I'm gonna debunk this point from. One, what if they bleach their hair blonde? Is it impossible for a Japanese person to change their hair color? Two, as rare as it is, Japanese people can have naturally blonde hair. This information was found through a simple Google search. Three, as I was doing research to properly debunk this point, I stumbled across an article talking about anime characters and the reasoning for their crazy hair colors. I'll link that in the description because it's quite interesting, but the main reasoning for it is that it's easy to tell characters apart when they have different hair colors. Tell me, Thuman, would anime characters really be recognizable in cartoons if they, if they all had black hair and brown eyes, especially with some animes having same face syndrome? I don't think so. 4. It's fiction. It's a cartoon. It doesn't have to follow the laws of real life. Let me give you some examples using my own OCs to show you what I mean. These two characters are Native American, yet they have blue eyes, which is a very rare trait for Native Americans to have. Now, because of my cartoony style, you can interpret these characters as being really any race, ethnicity, nationality, etc. And the blue eyes obviously help with the confusion. 
Does this make the characters any less Native American? No, it doesn't, because this is fiction, where you can make your characters look however the hell you want. And then there's this character, who's Indian, though her skin is noticeably darker than most Indians. And it would be understandable if someone were to mistake her as African. Does that make her African? No, it fucking doesn't. Five, I did some research on all the characters listed, so here's what I found. From what I saw about Naruto, there seems to be an interview which somewhat confirms that Naruto was intended to be Caucasian, so I'll give you that one. Edward is mixed from what I can tell. He is half Amestrian and half Xerxian. I, I am very sorry if I butchered those pronunciations. I have never watched Full Metal Alchemist. Please forgive me, Full Metal Alchemist fans. I don't know how to say these fucking words. Anyway, if you couldn't tell, these races are both completely fictional and come from completely fictional places. So, I looked up the inspiration for those fictional places. Emestrius? Emestrius? Well, however the fuck you say it, was seemingly based on a mix of places in Europe. And I couldn't find much about Xerxes, but it seems to have been based on Persia, which after doing so many Google searches, I think Persian people are considered white? Maybe? So I guess I can give you that one too, if what I'm seeing is correct. Also, his eyes are yellowy brown, not blue or green. Asta, I hope I'm saying that right, is also from a fictional country, which what I'm seeing is also based on various places in Europe. So again, I may be able to give you this one. But Usagi, however, lives in Tokyo, Japan, and is described on her Wikipedia as a Japanese superheroine. So like, what more do I have to say? It, it says it right there. It was a Google search away. But even if you were right on all of these, you're not basing it off of anything other than they look white, which isn't a good way to prove your point at all. And trust me, guys, it gets way worse later. Moreover, Naruto is from Konoha, which is a made-up country that doesn't exist. Therefore, he isn't Asian or Japanese, but rather a ninja from Konoha. After doing some research, Konoha was based on the creator's hometown of Naji, Okayama. Guess where that's located? Also, Konoha is a village or city, not a country, and trust me, that makes a difference. Not to use my OCs as an example again, but most of my OCs live in a city called Hoxton. Hoxton is a fictional place in Washington state. Because Hoxton is fictional, does that make it not from Washington? No, that's fucking dumb. Whether Naruto is white or not, this argument is stupid. Same with Edward from Full Metal Alchemist and Asta from Black Clover. Their countries or worlds are made up and don't exist in our world. Which means the characters who live there are automatically white because I said so. Japan is a very homogeneous country, hence why most Japanese people have dark hair and dark eyes because of that. Yeah, most. Also, again, this is fiction. Let anime studios give their anime characters crazy hair in peace. It makes it fun. Hell, maybe the fact that Japan is so homogenous is the reason why studios want to diversify their cast so much. It's something fresh and new to look at. Also, shout out to that girl with the red hair in the back. You're cool. Please tell me how turning a blonde-haired and blue-eyed character from a made-up country is erasing Japanese representation. Because if the character is Japanese, regardless of their hair or eye color, they're still Japanese. Is it really that hard to understand this concept? Imagine using this stupid fucking logic in real life. Hey mom, I bleached my hair blonde. I can't believe you would turn yourself white. Now there are cases where it's clear that the character is Japanese and it's important to their story. In those cases, I don't think it's appropriate to race bend the character as it could come off as disrespectful. So their Asian-ness is determined by whether it's important to their story or not? Is that what you're getting at? Does that 
apply to other races like black people would it be okay to race spend a black character if their blackness isn't important to their story this logic is stupid most of the logic in this video is stupid for example Jin from samurai champloo that has a deep historical story around his culture or mikasa from attack on titan who is the only asian that survived these characters explicitly have these cultural ties to their story and it's important to respect that unless they have blonde hair and blue eyes because fun character design is only for white people well anime characters have japanese names and they speak japanese so they must be japanese yeah uh spoiler alert despite her mentioning japanese names in the counter argument she doesn't actually argue against that part which conveniently is the strongest part of the counter argument she provides while, yes, you can argue that white people can speak Japanese, which, no shit. And while you could also argue that the shows are in Japanese to target its main demographic, Japanese people, it's odd that non-Japanese characters would have Japanese names. Hell, you mentioned Edward and Asta earlier, they have non-Japanese names. Unless specified otherwise, I'd say it's pretty safe to assume that characters with Japanese names are Japanese. Just because the shows are made in Japan and the characters speak Japanese, it doesn't make the characters Japanese. <laughs> Otherwise, is Princess Euphemia from Goat Geass Japanese too? The answer is no, and they made that very clear in the anime too. Also, in the dubs, these characters speak English, so are they suddenly from an English-speaking country? No, because English dubs are dubs. Japanese is the language that the cartoons are usually meant to be watched in. Dubs usually come along later so they can show their cartoons to a broader audience. No, I hope you understand why that logic makes literally no sense. Most of the logic you've been presenting also makes no sense. I personally think that things start getting a little tricky with characters like Usagi from Sailor Moon that are portrayed as Japanese in their shows. Wait, what? So she's portrayed as Japanese, but she's not Japanese, according to you. What? She's either Japanese or she's not Japanese. Pick one. In Usaki's case, the show already whitewashed her to fit the European beauty standards by making her look more European than Japanese. How the hell do you know that that was the studio's intention? Also, why the hell would a Japanese animation studio making a Japanese cartoon want to prioritize Europeans over Japanese people? That's such a fucking dumb claim, especially because you have no evidence to it. So if I decided to race spend a European looking Japanese character, I don't think I'm erasing Asian representation since it wasn't there to begin with. What the fuck, Thuman? If a Japanese character doesn't look Japanese enough, I have the right to waste-bend it. So what you're saying is that if a character doesn't fit the Japanese beauty standard, they're not truly Japanese? Again, what the fuck, Thuman? What about Japanese people who actively try and go against the Japanese beauty standard? Are they all of a sudden not truly Japanese? And I love how you completely ignore every other aspect of the Japanese beauty standard. Let me read off what I found online. 1. Light, clear skin, which Usagi has. 2. Large eyes, which she also has. 3. Being slim and petite, which she also is. She's 5 foot 1 at her tallest. Oh, but because she has blonde hair and blue eyes, that means she's appealing to the Europeans, guys! You do understand that beauty standards from different places overlap, right? I also want to mention that despite these being fictional characters, they're supposed to represent developed people with likes and dislikes and a life. They aren't supposed to represent Japan as a country. Is that seriously how you view Japanese characters? I am going to say this a third time. Thuman, what the fuck? But that's just my opinion. You're racist against Asians if you turn anime character skin darker. Most people aren't arguing that to my knowledge. They're arguing that turning an Asian character black is racist. There's a difference. You do realize that there are dark-skinned Asians too, right? There are even dark-skinned Japanese people. 
Did you not know that this group of darker skinned Asians and Japanese people are suffering from the lack of representation too? Well, if you didn't know, now you know. If you want to learn more about colorism in Asia, I'll leave a link to a very good video by Michelle in the description of my video. So go check it out, guys. She covers the topic very well. I... What? You just said that Japanese characters needed to follow the Japanese beauty standard to be Japanese. And now you're saying that dark-skinned Japanese characters, which are discriminated against due to the Japanese beauty standard, are still Japanese? Oh my god, Thuman, this video was so bad. Colorism in Japan is because of the Japanese beauty standard that you are using to determine what characters are and aren't truly Japanese. Again, for the fourth time, Thuman, what the fuck? The Japanese beauty standard is only good when it supports my narrative. Like, what the actual hell? This is a double standard. If you can race bend, we can too. Let's look at the definition of a double standard. A double standard is a rule or principle which is unfairly applied in different ways to different people or groups. I don't unfairly target any groups. I target them fairly since the status quo is already unfair. The fact of the matter is that white skinned individuals have an abundance of positive representation in TV and media. The same cannot be said for darker skinned people. Yet using a beauty standard that is actively colorist to determine what good Japanese representation is, is an amazing idea, apparently. So to level the playing field, I think it's completely okay for those that have less representation to race bend and reimagine their face to reflect them. This is done through fan art and does not imply that the original color was bad. It's simply just creating representation for those that unfortunately don't have it. The issue with blackwashing is that it doesn't level the playing field. Leveling the playing field would be adding more black representation in media. Someone blackwashing a random character doesn't do that. It's essentially meaningless. The character in the original media is still white. It takes more effort to make a change in black representation than just a bunch of people blackwashing random characters. You can blackwash all you want, I really don't care, but don't pretend that it does anything for black representation because it doesn't. Context matters when it comes to this topic. Simply put, whitewashing is erasing representation, blackwashing is creating it. Neither of these are correct. Nothing is being lost when someone whitewashes a character. It's harmful because of its racist intentions and its implication that being white makes you more beautiful or attractive. And nothing is being added when someone blackwashes a character. I explain this in more detail in my race spending video. They are not the same. I need to emphasize that the root of whitewashing ultimately comes from racism. Blackwashing, on the other hand, comes from the wish of being included. But blackwashing doesn't actually do anything to add inclusion unless the character is blackwashed by the media itself, which is a completely different story. You need to see the nuance of the situation and realize that you shouldn't dismiss an actual issue that exists for darker skinned individuals just because it doesn't affect you. Is that not what you're doing with Japanese characters? Create your own representation. I'm already creating my own representation through my art. Also, there are many people that are actively creating representation for black skin characters such as Saturday AM, which is a platform for diverse shonen manga. I found them through a creator called Wood Manga, who has his own manga called Apple Black. At the end of the day, we have to realize that even though many are creating representation in their own way, those people aren't visible to the everyday Joe watching this seasonal anime. They haven't been picked up by the mainstream media that most of us consume. Then talk about the shows, help the shows become mainstream. If a literal TV show with months upon months upon months of effort in writing, animation, character design, isn't helping with more black representation, then why the hell would singular drawings of random popular characters being drawn as black help get more black representation? This just doesn't add up. The industry has to change and create inclusivity for darker skinned people on a larger scale or give those creators a platform to be heard and discovered by more people. Which blackwashing does nothing to help with. What's your point? Create your own OCs. 
For those of you who don't know, OC is an original character. You got the definition of OC wrong. Yes, it means original character, but what you put on the screen is not the actual definition. That's a fan character. Yes, a fan character can be an OC, and I do consider fan characters a type of original character, but that's not what an OC is. An OC is just a character made by... It, it's a character made by someone, essentially. Really, any character can be considered an OC of the person or people who created it. OCs that have no connection to a story by a smaller artist don't really have an impact on a larger scale. Then make a fan character. Also, they may not directly help with representation in the same way as, you know, making a mainstream show would, but black characters with original and creative stories and original and creative character designs may inspire others to make characters like that as well, which will eventually help with black representation. I really hate this argument because it's essentially saying, hey guys, if we do less effort, we'll be able to have more black representation. Like, no, it's just a lazy way of thinking. I think creating diverse OCs is great, but it's just not the same without having that trusted, well-known character race bended. <sighs> You're really just thinking about quantity over quality, aren't you, Thuman? This may be crazy to you, but quality and originality of black representation matters more than the amount of people who see it. It's pretty common knowledge. If a million people see a drawing, but that drawing doesn't have much of an actual impact, that's nothing compared to if, let's say, 500 people see an OC, and that OC actually has an impact because of its originality and quality. This just comes down to opinions, and that's just my opinion. You guys are free to disagree on this one, but yeah, I feel like OCs don't have the same impact as if I were to just take Usagi, who I already know and love, and race bended her. Well, that's not how really anything works. Again, like I said, the quality of representation matters more than the quantity of people who see it. Just because a lot of people know who Sailor Moon is doesn't mean it's going to have a large impact when that character is blackwashed and posted online. What if someone has a black character as their favorite? Can they whitewash them to relate to them more? I don't mean any harm by doing that. I personally think you shouldn't do that. Why? Because of the disproportionately small amount of representation that dark skin has compared to the abundant amount of representation that white skin has. It just comes across as you erasing the little representation that exists for darker skin. Even if you don't have bad intentions while whitewashing, it will still come across as a negative thing because of the racist history that whitewashing has. Because of that dark past and the fact that racism and colorism are still rampant in our current society, people will always have a negative connotation with the act of whitewashing. Most likely your good intentions will not be recognized and people will assume you did it out of hate or spitefulness. This might lead to you getting backlash from doing it. At the end of the day, I'm not stopping you from drawing what you want. Rather, I'm explaining to you how others might perceive your actions. But that logic of people will assume you have racist intent doesn't apply to people blackwashing a white passing Japanese character apparently. And the mention of backlash is funny because people get black backlash from blackwashing all the fucking time. But that doesn't mean you can't blackwash. Nor does that mean that it's bad to do so. Artists need freedom to be creative and draw whatever they want without any restrictions. Since when did it become creative to draw a black character as a gorilla? What? When? Uh -huh. When in the ever-loving fuck was this subject brought up? This isn't whitewashing. I'm not sure if you realize this, Thuman, but drawing a black girl as a gorilla is a lot different from whitewashing. You do understand that, right? There is a massive difference between trying to erase a character's blackness and trying to focus on a character's blackness in a racist and stereotypical way. When did erasing representations for those who barely have any become artistic? I'm sorry, but I don't see the innovativeness in racism. Wait, 
I thought the issue wasn't that everyone who whitewashed was racist, but that if you whitewash, people will assume you're trying to be racist. Now we're back to everyone who whitewashes is racist. I really don't have that much of an issue with either of those arguments, but can you please stay consistent? And if you were talking about the drawing of the black girl being drawn as a gorilla, uh, you have to specify that because the way you put your points together did not make it seem like you were talking about that because you talked about the gorilla drawing first then mentioned whitewashing then mentioned this that's a really stupid way to word your points if that's what you were talking about and if i'm completely misunderstanding you, you actually were talking about the gorilla drawing the whole time and the thing about whitewashing wasn't actually about whitewashing it was about the gorilla drawing um that's not a racing black representation, I already said this. It's focusing on a, a black character's blackness in a racist and stereotypical way. There is a difference. If you use your artistic freedom to create racist caricatures, don't be upset if others use their freedom of speech to criticize it. I mean, yeah, but I thought this was about whitewashing. I thought that that comment was supposed to be about whitewashing, not about racist caricatures. And if this point was actually supposed to be this entire time about racist caricatures, and that's what you were targeting with your counterargument, uh, that should have been specified in said counterargument. Well, that's all. Thuman doesn't seem to be like a horrible commentator or anything from what I've seen. But this video was really bad. Like, like really fucking bad. Like, hell, her video on blackwashing, like I said, while having many issues, wasn't that bad. I've seen way worse videos talking about blackwashing and how it helps representation. But this video, it was absolutely fucking terrible. I honestly don't have much more to say about it, other than that I hope Thuman doesn't agree with the things she said in this video anymore. Thank you all for watching, have a great day, and goodbye.